Hi guys, welcome to the next video. Um, gonna be making a step today. Um, it's like a bull nose step uh, using this engineered flooring. So the house I'm working on at the minute uh, has this flooring throughout uh, downstairs. Well, it's got it throughout the whole house to be honest. It's like a um, limed oak effect engineered board. So an engineered board has got five or six mil of uh, oak, so solid oak on the top, which is finished. And then it's got the rest of the board is made up of plywood as a backing piece and uh, that gives it some stability to stop it from uh, cupping and bowing and twisting and such so uh, it's uh, you get the oak effect flooring so it looks like solid oak flooring it effectively is but you've got the stability of having that plywood layers underneath it that uh, keeps it nice and flat but the only problem is obviously when you get to the edge of anything or try and use it for anything other than a top finished surface um, you see a edge on it like this which is uh, plywood you can get that to focus so uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, create a ball nose step so cut a, uh, a ball nose to one end and then uh, finish the edge of the engineered board to create a nice finish and uh, yeah, make it pleasing to the eye and uh, hopefully make it nice and strong. Okay, so to form the ball nose radius, I'm going to wrap the flooring round. I'm going to cut it out of a piece of ply. I'm going to cut five layers out because I need 125 mil height and uh, just glue them together and then uh, trim that in the circle that I, I need to wrap that uh, veneer round. I'm just going to mark two points to set my uh, trammel heads up. These are a uh, invaluable bit of kit uh, if you're doing any curved work. Uh, you can just machine any length of stick that you need and uh, you can draw a perfect circle from that. So that will be the uh, the corner piece with a, a square base. I'm just going to draw five more arcs along this piece of wood to create the uh, block that uh, that I need to wrap the veneer around. I don't need perfect rectangle for the full height. I just need a piece of timber at the front um, to give it some strength or some backing. Okay, so I've just got so uh, on the outside of them lines. What I'm going to do is uh, glue them together now. So I've got a uh, a nice curved section um, available. Get them all glued alternate so there's strength both sides because of the material uh, tapering off. Um, it's a bit narrower there. I'm just going to rotate them so that there's, there's alternate strengths. You don't have to, as long as there's enough material there to take the strength of that uh, veneer, it's fine. And then um, once they're glued into that shape, opposites like this, I'm going to uh, use that top line that's the, the proper arc that I require and cut exactly on the line through the entire lot of, uh, of the plywood when it's glued and screwed together. And that will give me the perfect arc through the whole lot um, to veneer round. So this will be the bottom piece. So I'm going to screw through the bottom into the next piece. And then from that point on, work from the top and screw into this piece again. Um, the reason for that is if you start from one side and screw into the bottom piece, put another piece on the top, 
if you do need to do any machining on this piece later on, like planing it into an unlevel floor, anything like that, you've got screws in there that you can't access. So having the screws on the outside um, gives you peace of mind. You can take them out if you need to and, uh, and cut into it. I'm just going to use my centre point now that I use for the, that I use for the curve uh, with the square and uh, pick an appropriate point to uh, use on the curve. cut them lines out. So that uh, now is the exact radius of the step, 90 degrees. Um, I've got some some outside formers here so when I've cut the flooring down to a, a thin veneer when I clamp it together um, these will go around the outside of me clamp to it to um, hold that veneer nice and tightly all the way around uh, against this former uh, without them it can tend to follow uh, its own sort of path so if it goes slightly thicker in one place um, it won't bend as much you'll have a flat spot and then you'll have a kink where it goes thin and uh, you won't get a true curve. So you need something, um, preferably your off cut from what you've just cut round. Um, on this one I didn't do waste too much material um, leaving an off cut because I'd already got the formers from the last step I made because um, I'm making two of these. So now I need to cut the uh, flooring down. I'm going to cut it down to width plus about five or six mil and then uh, notch out a section in the plywood so i'm going to reduce the face of the uh the oak the finished oak down to about uh, two mil on the bandsaw and then um I'll do that between the two bits of the engineer boarding so the, the plywood will then continue on from these points here so i need to work out that length from there to there that i've got to notch out so we can use uh go back to school and use some um old equations. So the circumference is the uh, diameter times by pi, so 3.142 times diameter. So I know the diameter because I set the radius on my trammel heads. So the radius was uh, 287 mil. So off the 100 mil there, we've got 287. So it times that by two. Five hundred and seventy-four. And then we we'll times that by th three point one four two and that'll give us our um, circumference. So the answer is uh so three point one four two times five seven four gives us our circumference which is about 1800 and if you divide that by 4 we end up with a figure of 540 so from this point here to this point here is uh, 540 
we'll use that as a starting point. Um, generally, it will be a, a couple of mil more um, because you sort of got inaccuracies in this cutting where it's rough surface and they're varying in the thickness of the veneer. So we're probably going to be five or six mil more than this, but it's a good starting point and then we can trim a bit more off as we need it. Okay, so I'm going to mark in uh, 120 mil from the end, and then mark my 540 mil on, plus the 100 mil that I'm measuring on. I'll do a, a trench cut either end with the cross cut, and then uh, set the band saw up and take that down to like a veneer thickness that will bend around that former. Sorry, but I uh, forgot to press record on the uh, second part of cutting the veneer there. But uh, I basically turned the uh, piece of timber around and uh, set the fence so it was the thickness of the veneer left on. So after I made that first cut, um, I put the timber against the fence like this. So the thickness of the veneer between the blade and the fence set that and then cut in this direction like this to the other end of the uh, cut on my uh, trench cut and that left me with a veneer like we've got here. Okay so the um, piece of flooring that I'm wrapping around the riser will intersect this block at this point here. Thickness of the housing that I've made, I'm just going to tick along this um, piece of plywood, and then from that point on, I can uh, make a, uh, a flat base for that uh, to support the front edge of that flooring. Okay, so that's the position the, uh, the face board will sit with the veneer wrapped around the, the uh, former here. So I'm going to trim this off flush with the 90 degree in the back. a strip in here to uh, accept the end of the uh, engineered flooring, keep it square in this direction. So the step needs to cover a 350mm go. So we've got about a 2.5mm veneer. So that leaves 60mm at the back, so I need a 60mm board running down this piece with a square cut on the end and uh, we'll stop that in line with the same position on, on this side as we did on this side. Now I can uh, just join and uh, domino them together.
I've uh, just cleaned the glue off these points here. Give me a bit, a bit of a trial run. Um, as I pull it round, there's a slightly thicker bit here, which is creating a point here, which is why these are quite useful to uh, pull the curve around evenly. So you see with that uh, veneer pulled around nice and even, it's just pinching a tiny bit here because it's uh, not quite long enough. Um, so just house a tiny bit more out of this and get that to come back nice and square so it meets the plywood on the inside. And uh, we should be ready to uh, glue that bad boy on. Okay, let's glue this up. So um, I'm going to sit it on some five mil packers on the uh, on the flat workbench, just underneath the uh, underneath the block and the board that runs uh, under the step. This is because the, um, the step's going on a tiled floor, so that five mil will give me a, a tiny bit of. Uh, scribing room against the uh, ed front edge of the step so uh, if there's any intolerances I can just plane a bit off the front and then uh, set it on some uh, compound and just seat the step down and uh, it gives you a nice level step without too much heartache trying to uh, plane this plywood away. I'm going to put a, a, a good smear of glue on everything. Uh, pack is quite good because it's got like a small, probably half a mil ridge in it. If you keep it quite flat, you get half mil ridges of glue rather than uh, just applying it to the surface and scraping most of it off. I'm just going to put an extra bead just on the edge, top and bottom, so that we know that's got plenty of glue behind it. It's going to be nice and strong um, if it gets caught. I'm just going to keep that uh, that nose in, or the uh, riser flush to the bench as much as possible. And that should give us a five mil clearance. So I've uh, taken the clamps off now and uh, turned the piece upside down. So this is the bottom side of the step where we've got the five mil clearance to scribe it to the floor. And where it's thin round the uh, ball nose here, I'm just gonna clean this glue off and put a five mil backing piece uh, up against that to give that some strength so this can't be knocked off uh, in transit or while I'm fitting it. Okay, so to finish the step off and give it some support, I've uh, put a back rail on here, screwed to this board with again the 5mm packers underneath to give me some clearance on the majority of the step. Um, then I've cut some pieces to sit in between these rails that will glue and clamp in place. Um, I'm just going to mark the positions of them with the square. Keep everything nice and square. We're going to have one here. To support the, um, the veneer here, so if this step gets kicked, 
it's not the thickness of the veneer that's holding the, uh, the force, it will be this piece of timber. We've got uh, four pieces, so we'll just divide that equally. Now the gussets are done, um, I've just squared a line around here, uh, plus 20mm from my finish length that I need. I'm just going to rough these off um, and then they can be transported to site. So they're pretty much complete, uh, ready for fitting now. Okay, so to make the tread of the step, um, I'm going to be using the flooring that's been used throughout the um, house already. So it's an engineered board with a uh, limed oak finish, and uh, it's got quite a visible uh, gap between the two boards, so I want to try and keep that uh, in the step as well. So what I'm going to do is uh, form the, the curve of the step plus 20mm, so it's got a 20mm lipping um, overhanging or a nosing. Um, around what I've made as the base for the step. I'm going to rebate the plywood off, so cut the plywood back, leaving the oak, engineered oak on the top, it's about 6mm thick. Um, cut that back and then add about 50mm depth um, in matching end grain, so keeping the boards running this way for that piece I'm adding on underneath, um, so it matches this oak, and then run a lipping all the way along the front, glued to that rebate. So from the top looking down, it looks like the uh, flooring going right to the edge of the nosing. And then when you look at it from the edge, you just see the oak, engineered oak, joining onto that lipping that I'm going to glue on underneath. So before I do that, uh, I want to glue these two boards together. Um, because it's flooring, it's been designed to butt together nicely at the top. So there's a bit of relief on the joint. So especially on the underside, don't know if you can see that, I can just turn it over. So the underside of the flooring looks like this. So there's quite a lot of relief um, in the board. So I'm going to get rid of that uh, tongue and groove and uh, put a glue joint in it so it's nice and square and tight. Glue it together and then uh, go from there. So I'm just ripping the uh, boards down on the panel saw to give me a straight edge to work to and then uh, running them through the spindle moulder with the uh, glue joint block to, uh, to give me the glue surface area to glue the two boards together. So just before I glue the boards together, I'm going to take this sharp edge off here that I've created with the glue joint block um, to replicate the flooring uh, as everything else has got this, this tiny bevel in it. It also gives me something, uh, if I get any glue squeeze, I can follow that uh, just tiny V groove uh, with, a, with a scraper and clean that glue squeeze out. Whereas if they were flush and then, because this has got like a bit of a wave in the flooring, if there's any glue squeeze it'd be difficult to clean that off, scrape that off, so uh, the V-groove just gives us something to uh, work to.
Okay, so I've unclamped the top or the treads now. Um, so I'm just going to set these trammel heads to the uh, depth, the radius that I did on the step, uh, plus 20 mil. So that's the thickness of the lipping I'm going to use, or the nosing that uh, goes around the ball nose of the tread. So it's going to be that uh, radius I put on the uh, riser, plus 20 mil. And if I measure that distance in, 387 from the edges, I've cut this as a square line. me a uh, centre point to work to. I'll put my trammel on that point. It'll uh, give me the arc of my ball nose on the tread. Okay, so that's the basics of the step. Where the ply meets the uh, oak here, I'm going to rebate the ply away. Um, about 20 mil. I think I'm going to go deeper than the 20 mil, and then uh, take this down. And the nosing that's going to be about 50 mil thick finish will actually sit onto uh, this uh, riser section. So I'll rebate this riser away as well and the nosing will be a bit deeper than 20 mil because this end grain section here won't be very strong if it's uh, if it's not got any uh, depth to it so uh, that's what i'm going to do so rebate this back next uh, probably to a depth of about 40 50 mil uh, around the end grain and just 20 mil along the front and uh, glue the sections to it while we're here you can uh, see why i um, rejointed this piece here so it doesn't look like it's uh, very aligned on the end grain, but uh, it dips up and down along that board with this, there's like a, almost a textured surface. So it, uh, it's got chunks taken out of it all the way through. But uh, the reason I planed it is to get that joint there nice and strong, uh, nice and tight. So that when I rebate it away, it looks like one piece of timber. Whereas uh, the two boards just tongue and groove together um, left a bit of a gap in the end grain here on that top section and you'd have seen the joint. So I've got a 160mm cutter here and a 110mm bearing so that should give me a 25mm rebate uh, around the curve. Um, that's enough for a start with and then I can take that back a bit more later on. Okay, so I've just gone deep enough there with the spindle to uh, take the ply off and leave this oak. So now I'm going to attach some oak to this end grain, trim it to the face and uh, that will be the nosing made up. Okay, so I've got these blocks, the thickness of the uh, finish of the nosing that I want. Um, and I've just basically cut them into sections. So uh, this one will go on the end here, and this one goes slightly around the circle like this. This one travels most part of the curve like that. And then it intersects the uh, front one here like this. 
So if I just tick uh, some points on these for the domino to join them, and we should know we're in the right places, I can stick some glue on there and clamp them all together. So I've just, uh, after I've glued that up, I've just flipped it over to check the joints are tight both sides of the piece. Um, and I'll flip it back over now and leave it flat so it glues flat onto the table. Um, once it's dry, I'm going to mark the outside radius on and cut just slightly away from that. And then uh, mark an inside radius around 50mm deep from that outside radius. And then uh, I've left the machine set with the bearing in it and uh, I've left the height set so that uh, I'll rebate this piece the same as I rebated the uh, flooring and then they should uh, lock over each other on like a rebate so that uh, the rebate on this will sit on the bottom of the flooring and the part that's not rebated will sit up to the lipping on the outside. Okay, so I've cleaned the glue off the uh, glock to glue together. I'm just going to sit the uh, tread on top, draw around it and uh, cut to that line. Okay, so like I said, uh, I'm going to double rebate this so that they lap over each other to give a nice uh, strong glue joint. So that uh, that bearing and uh, cutter combo gave me a 25mm uh, deep rebate. So if I cut this in 50mm or just slight shy of it, so say 49mm, uh, if I cut that curve of 49mm around there and then rebate the inside edge, it will sit nicely over that and uh, give me two surfaces for the uh, glue to sit on and for strength for when you walk on it. So just uh, very carefully run a gauge around the outside of the uh, timber. So now I just uh, want to use the uh, bearing guide cutter to take the rebate out here that will counteract into the other part. I've screwed a little in-feed piece on here so that uh, to get my cutter into this part I can rest it on there and stop the bearing from spinning and then gently uh, enter the cut rather than trying to enter the cut and then stop the bearing on this piece of oak. And uh, I've just cut uh, the same radius on the inside of there on this piece of MDF and uh, I'm going to use that to hold as a hand piece so that while I'm working here with the uh, bearing cutter my hands are well out of the way. Uh, if you didn't have that you'd have to be sort of there with your cutter very near your hand so that's a bit of a safety thing so just screw that on the top there. The screws will be in the part of the uh, tread that's not seen and it uh, keeps your hands well out of the way. Obviously make sure the screws aren't long enough to go into your cut. So that's pretty good. Okay, so I've changed my mind on how I'm going to do the uh, lipping on the nose here. Um, what I'm actually going to do now is uh, 
just cut that back so it is 20 mil thick. I think by the time that it's glued to this uh, the riser on the uh, step and got some screws through from the back into it, I think it'll be strong enough to uh, withstand any, any knocks or kicks it's going to get. So uh, I don't think it needs to be as thick as it is. It's going to it's a lot more work to rebate all this through and uh, for that to sit on and uh, then stop it halfway around the curve for the flat bit to be lipping over the front. And it's also not going to hide any movement, so uh, if this shrinks you're going to see a gap open up between the riser and the uh, nose in. Whereas if it's uh, sat over the front and glued to the face, any shrinkage you'll just expose more of the riser. So I think it's a better route to go that way. Um, and it, I think it'll be strong enough. So uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, mark, set this back 20 mil, draw around it, and uh, cut that uh, oak no nosing off at the uh, 20 mil depth. Okay, so I've just managed to mess up the uh, filming of me cutting that line. I just cut the uh, centre of that line round, so it gave me a clearance against the riser. Now all I need to do is glue this to the tread. Like so. Put a couple of clamps on there. how it will be uh, finished. When this is clamped tight I'll run around with a sander and then uh, take a round over bit and sort of work it so it runs on that joint line and gives us a nice rounded step to step on both sides of there and uh, hopefully the joint will be pretty seamless between the two parts. So to sum up really, I um, want to take this to uh, to the where it's going to be installed. I'll scribe the uh, the base down to the floor till it sits uh, sits nice and flat and doesn't rock or anything, and get it pretty much level across the top. And I'll set up a uh, a laser and uh, plane the top in uh, to exactly halfway, so it's got a halfway step, and uh, plane all these down to. Uh, to suit uh, the height that we need um, using the laser line as a reference um, and then uh, screw this in place uh, through these back pieces and through the side and glue it down so there will be lots of globs of do globs of do <laughs> dobs of glue uh, underneath this step where that 5mm cavity is especially under these uh, rails here to uh, transfer that load from the step through these rails so that we don't get any bounce or uh, sort of box effect. Fill these uh, holes in with some rock wool and uh, then just glue the top on in place. And there we have it. Job done. 
pretty pleased with that. Uh, it's turned out uh, almost better than I expected. Um, it's a really nice way to uh, finish that end grain off uh, without having a lipping around the outside. Um, it does actually look like a solid piece of oak now. And uh, that'll be a really solid step uh, to bridge the two floor levels. I don't think I'm going to be able to film the uh, fitting process, so I'll uh, take lots of pictures and uh, show them afterwards.